All right, everybody, you need to stop what you're doing right now because we need to talk about Unreal Engine 5. Epic Games just put out a video showcasing the new features and the new engine. And today feels like Christmas for Unreal Engine developers. In this video, we're going to be talking about UI, tech, open world, animation, audio, and gameplay. So put on your seat belts and enjoy the ride. What's up everybody, my name is Anis. Welcome back to The Hive, the place where we make awesome games one sale at a time. This episode, we're gonna take a look at Unreal Engine 5. We're gonna uh, talk about the newly announced features as well as try it for ourselves. We're gonna see how the engine runs and uh, we're gonna take a look at the uh, sample, the project that uh, Epic Games just uh, released with the uh, early access of Unreal Engine 5. Before we get into it, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. In this channel, we learn together how to make awesome big games alone or in small teams. We leverage tools uh, as much as we can. So if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing if you're interested in game dev and game design. And if you're already subscribed, hit that like button. It helps the channel a lot. Let's talk about the Unreal Engine 5 announced features. The first thing we gotta talk about is actually the new UI. Uh, they completely overhauled the entire UI of the engine. I didn't dislike the uh, the UI of Unreal Engine 4, but it was actually in, uh, in need of a refresh. It was starting to look a little bit old. Epic Games have been revamping the UIs for many of their tools inside Unreal Engine 4. They changed completely some of the tools like uh, animation, for example, and animation montage. And in this new version of the engine, it looks like they completely overhauled everything and tied everything together into a new and modern UI that I actually really like. I've already tried the engine just for like 10 minutes and I'm really, really um, in love with the new UI and how it works. Besides the new look, it seems like the, um, the focus of the new UI was to maximize screen space. So everything now works in drawers. You can hide a lot of the parts of the UI. You can hide your content browser. You can hide your word outliners. You can put everything into drawers and just uh, take them out when you need them. So I think it's a really good idea. It will save a lot of uh, screen space and it will make using the engine more like playing a game rather than using an engine, which is uh, actually pretty awesome. Another thing for the UI um, is the Quixel bridge. It looks like in Unreal Engine 5, Quixel bridge is natively integrated in the engine. I think that is a very good idea because it's gonna encourage developers to use the Quixel mega scans and since those assets are really, really amazing, uh, it's just gonna up the quality of a lot of games. Today, it was kind of uh, annoying to use the Quixel bridge to bring assets into the engine, uh, especially when you were just prototyping or you were just making a small project. So now that is natively integrated in the engine, I think it's gonna be a lot easier and it's gonna encourage a lot of developers to just use Quixel mega scans and Quixel assets in their project. So uh, yeah. Another good point for Epic Games. They also added a new uh, thing in Quixel. Besides the uh, the textures and the assets, they add, they added what they call the Quixel uh, Mega Assemblies, which are just assemblies of multiple assets. I think that's really, really good thing because it's gonna make the process of using Quixel assets even easier. Now you can just bring assets that are assemblies of other assets and you can just use them to quickly build your worlds. Next two things we're going to talk about are uh, two technologies, Nanite and Lumen. And these are mostly targeted towards uh, next-gen consoles and powerful computers. Nanite is uh, used to lower the number of polygons for heavy assets. So if you have assets that are made for the movies or for uh, for uh, animation uh, films and stuff that have millions of polygons, you can't really use that uh, in a game because it's gonna kill your polygon budget. Um, with Nanite, you can use them. And it's automatic, the engine lowers the number of polygon and makes your asset usable in a game in real time. That's really good. And Lumen is uh, the new dynamic lighting that they showed. It actually looks really, really good and it's fully dynamic so uh, there's no baking in lights and we're gonna see that in the sample project the sample is really well lit it's amazing how it looks and there's nothing that is baked in there everything is dynamic and it's plugged into the time of day uh, so uh, yeah that looks really really good so nanite and lumen next gen tech i think it's gonna be awesome it's gonna make a lot of games awesome next point of focus we're gonna talk about is open world and uh, open world tools. The Unreal Engine 5 looks like it's gonna bring that to another level. Uh, they announced a feature or a group of features that is called Work Partition. 
Um, the first important thing in it is that you can just create a huge world and it's gonna partition it uh, automatically. Um, it supports uh, level streaming natively. You can configure the size of the tiles and it's gonna partition the world and then it's gonna be streamed automatically by the engine. Uh, it is fully configurable. You can configure the size of the tiles and you can configure probably the depth of uh, streaming. This is uh, pretty nice for uh, word composition, which is something that is uh, usually annoying to do in, uh, in games. Um, and it's also gonna make collaborating on uh, creating game levels uh, very easy. Because of the partitioning, you can work on a specific chunk of the level while your lighter is working on a different chunk and while your level designer is working on different chunk. Let's talk about animation. Uh, for animation, Unreal Engine 4 was pretty robust in terms of animation. It had a lot of things between uh, uh, animation sequences and everything you can do in that with notifies and all of that, animation montage, and how you can uh, use your code or blueprints to drive your animations. Uh, it had already control rig integrated. It had a sequencer for, uh, for cinematics and all that. So it looks like Unreal Engine 5 is just making that even better and better integrated. Um, they announced a full body IK solver, which is gonna make inverse kinematics easy to do for every game. That's good because uh, IK in a game just makes the game look better, makes the character more realistic. They showed in the demo how they used um, the control rig with sequencer to animate a boss, just that. Like they did, they animated a boss and the attack of the boss just inside the engine, which is pretty cool. So uh, yeah, they, uh, it looks like they are making the animation framework even more robust and even more complete so that we do not need to get out of Unreal Engine except for some very specific tasks. We're still gonna make animations in other software probably, but uh, when you have, when you just want to do, for example, a cinematic uh, with control rig and sequencer, you will not need to go into Blender or Maya or anything to make your uh, your animation and then uh, put it in the engine. And now let's move on to my favorite feature, gameplay features plugin. I think it's gonna go under the radar for a lot of people in the video because they haven't talked about it a lot, but I think it is the most important feature in that announcement. You guys may know uh, of Gas. A lot of people on this channel asked me to do a gameplay ability system uh, guide. And actually the reason why I didn't do it is because I was waiting for Unreal Engine to announce what they were gonna do with Unreal Engine 5. Because it didn't make sense for me to have gameplay ability system be this robust, very complex and amazing system for managing gameplay abilities, but still need to do C++ just a little bit of C++ in order to use it, which made a lot of people not use it because a lot of people just use Unreal Engine with blueprints and Epic Games didn't make the gameplay abilities system usable with only blueprints. And I was asking myself why, why did they make this choice? And I actually thought of that before the announcement of Unreal Engine 5. I was thinking like, I think this is something that is gonna be integrated in Unreal Engine 5. It looks like we're gonna make gameplay features completely in the engine without writing a line of code from input to playing an animation, playing sounds, playing effects, applying gameplay effects, uh, changing stats, all that. It looks like it's gonna be completely configurable within the engine and that is going to be awesome. I think it's gonna change the way we do actions and gameplay features. Unreal Engine 5 is supposed to launch early 2022 and there's an early access version already available today. Let's take this desk down and jump into the demo. All right, guys, as you can see, I've already downloaded the uh, Unreal Engine 5 early access. It is in here and I've already downloaded the sample project, which is in here. Uh, to download it, you go to UE5, the UE5 tab, and here you have download early access. And if you scroll down a little bit, you have the sample project, which is in here. And if you do not see the UE5 tab, you just go to the settings and you will have an update and restart. You click it and, uh, and when the, the launcher relaunches, uh, you're gonna see the tab in here. So without further ado, let's launch Valley of the Ancient. Um, a little disclaimer, so my computer, my laptop, I, I will be running this on a laptop. Uh, my laptop is um, an i7, six cores, 12 threads, um, it is 32 gigs of RAM and it is a, an RTX 2080. So it is a very good laptop, but it's still a laptop. It's not a desktop. And uh, let's see how it looks. Maybe the, the sample project is not not even going to run. All right. Launching the engine. 45, 70, 75. 
Oh, that's fast. All right. Project loading is really fast. I already did open the project before, so uh, it's not it's not gonna load this fast the first time, but actually it did load really fast even the first time compared to Unreal Engine 4 project. So I'm really happy with that. It looks like they really optimized the engine. To view the main level, open ancient content slash map slash ancient world dot umap. Use the word partition window to selectively load the map cells you wish to view. To run the demo, you will need the following specs. Looks like we're good. Recommended specs. Looks like we're not good. First, let's take a look at the UI. I think it looks really sharp. The menus seem to be almost the same as before. I do like that. I do not like to be completely lost when a new version of the engine com comes out. Here are some of the some of the new features. So as you can see, there are no content browser in here. But if I hit Control and Space, I can just bring out the control the uh, the content browser. And I think that also these in here can be. Uh, drawers, I don't know how to do that yet. Oh, move the sidebar. All right. So now we have it in here. Outliner, move to sidebar. Data layers, move to sidebar. Word partition, move to sidebar. So as you see, screen use is completely maximized. We have everything in drawers. So if we want the content browser, we can bring it in here. Uh, if we want the details, we can bring it in here. If we want the word outliner, we can bring it from here. So let's make these in, into tabs again because I do like things the old way. Content browser is really good on control space. Uh, on the other hand, because uh, this is not useful always this because it takes so much space. So it's really good to have it in here. So let's get into maps and load the ancient world map. And will you look at this? It looks absolutely phenomenal. Oh my God. Holy crap. Man, these Quix Omega scans are just like, they look better than real life. I was in the desert like two years ago. Didn't look as good as this. This looks like next gen Earth. <laughs> Let's just hit play and see, see how it goes. I see a little flame in the back of my laptop. I think that's normal. Drone. What is drone? Oh man, this looks so good. Let's put it in full screen. So it's F11 in Unreal Engine 4 or 5 to go full screen when uh, when you're playing something in the viewport. I do use that a lot, even when, I've, when I'm not playing. If I'm just like level designing, I use uh, F11 to just make it full screen man this looks absolutely amazing oh looks absolutely gorgeous a little too much motion blur in my taste but uh all right x return echo get up oh my god Well, guys, it does. It does run hardly on my laptop. So as I said, I have an i7 RTX 2080 and 32 gigs, gigs of RAM and an SSD, and it is running pretty hard. But keep in mind that this is the 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 engine running, not the game. If the game was uh, built for the PC, I think it it would run a lot better than this. But th here I'm playing in editor, so it's normal that it lags a little bit. Uh, Right, let's go. What is this? Interact. Let's interact. All right, all right, all right. Man, this looks good. Man, this looks good. So we can see the full, uh, the uh, full body IK solver. So look at how the, the legs are placed even if we are standing on a slope. And it looks like this is automatic. At least it's gonna be done easily in Unreal Engine 5. I, I think it looks really amazing. Like, this is something that I really like in games. I like when we have full body IK because it just makes the game a lot more realistic. But this is, this is absolutely stunning. Looks really, really realistic. So left shift to walk, all right. 
shoot. Right, you can stop walking. Let's shoot. Bang! Damn. And jump. And here comes the ancient. So for those who didn't know, the character we're playing as is called Echo. It's Kratos' little girl. So uh, in the, the next uh, God of War game, uh, we're gonna see we're gonna see her, and uh, Kratos is gonna call her girl every time. Girl, come here. Girl, shoot. Oh wow. Man, it's really hard to play in editor. Damn, this looks good, man. And everything you've just seen in here, like this boss and how he was animated and everything, it was done with control rig and sequencer in the engine. All right, guys. So I'm really happy with the way the engine looks. I'm really happy with the new features. I think we needed a refresh for the UI. I think Nanite and uh, Lumen are going to be some crazy features and technologies for, uh, for next gen games. Uh, I think the new framework for animation is going to be even more robust than the one in Unreal Engine 4. I think gameplay features is going to be absolutely awesome. Unreal Engine 5, guys. This is the day we try Unreal Engine 5 and it is going to be absolutely awesome what we're gonna see on this channel. We're gonna be exploring it a lot and we're gonna be making guides and tutorials. If you're interested in Unreal Engine 5, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell because I will be doing a lot of videos on Unreal Engine 5. So if you like this video, please hit that like button. It helps the channel a lot. As usual, my name is Ennis. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.